Yeah? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, my number one is the aforementioned Call of Juarez Gunslinger um, on right. the Xbox 360. Uh, well, yeah, you've done the trial, so what did you think? So, um, the game, I'd heard about it for ages, and then for some reason, because it was an, like a, I knew it was going to be a, a live arcade game, whatever, you know, a smaller game, I thought it was going to end up be like a 2D game or something like that. So, even when I saw screenshots, it kind of. I don't know, I wasn't paying attention at all. It, it was just drifting over my head. Also, the cartel was such a fucking horror show for me. No, it wasn't. That, <laughs> for me, it was. Okay. Um, I just didn't... I couldn't really, like, identify with anything Call of Juarez. But then I started reading this week on forums and people were raving about it. And I was like, fuck it, I'll, I'll get the trial. The demo's on, uh, on Steam, so I got it on, on PC. And it's fucking great. I could tell straight away um, that it was great. It is... It just reminded me of Bulletstorm. It felt great to shoot the guys. Um, it looks really nice, but cut corners in a way that would be a little bit offensive if you paid, you know, 50, 40 quid, whatever, for it. But, yeah, you, when when you've paid nothing or, you know, not nothing, but a small amount of money for it, you, you don't mind any of that sort of stuff. And... Um, even the, the the acting and the uh, the story it was telling because it was all done in it seems to be all done in voiceover is that yeah. right but yeah with a sort of constant narration going on and it was doing some stuff where it's like something happened he's like no it's not like that yeah um, that was really cool and then there was a duel I just thought this this is great I'm definitely gonna get it I just uh, well I needed to play more um, thingy my one and uh, I wanted to finish Metro first just to make sure I finished it but I'm definitely yeah. To, sorry, tell, tell me, uh, shall I get it? Uh, yeah, buy it. It's, um, I finished it earlier today. Um, it's uh, Ubisoft continue to impress me. I mean, I know that we have to put most of the praise at Techland's feet because mm. Techland, I just, I, I'm such a fan of Techland. We've spoken about it many a times. So I always have been. I like it even this, but but it is really good looking, and this is as it's polished and as slick as Dead Island is scrappy and rubbish. Mm. Um, the story is actually really good. In a strange way, it's kind of like Assassin's Creed in that it's it just throws all of these people, like Butch Cassidy's in it, Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, Harvey mm. Logan, Jesse James, and like, some of it takes place in the aftermath of the Great Train Robbery and there's all this stuff. Um, and th it's really cool because the, that device of having an unreliable narrator goes throughout the whole thing, and it really works. There's bits where he, he says things, and then they'll get him, they'll ask him to correct himself. They say that's bullshit, and then he'll go back. And go, oh yeah, I remember. And then it will take you back through it. There's a bit where the pe person he's talking to falls asleep, so he just says, hey, and then there was gunfire. It wakes him up, and then he quizzes him, and then they go back. And when he describes things happening, sometimes scenery just you know appears. In you know, to sort of along with the story, it's really ambitious for something mm. that's a downloadable game. Also, and there are moments where it looks really, really like something that you pay forty quid for. Um, I'm never going to talk badly about the Chrome engine ever again because. Maybe it just took uh, Techland this long to really, really get to grips with it. But if you're playing a score attack or a time attack, uh, any kind of shooter like this, you need to be able to execute everything with precision. And you can. Yeah. The shooting feels absolutely phenomenal. There's no annoying bits where scenery gets in the way. There's no bits where you pull off headshots that aren't headshots. It feels so clean and crisp and... Ma as satisfying. Yeah, I definitely felt that just from the short amount that I played it. Real, really clean and crisp, the yeah. shooting. As, as satisfying just to play as um, as any shooter I could probably mention. Um, and some of the systems, again, it's like most Techman games, there are some really neat ideas in there. The, uh, the sense of death gauge thing that every so often as someone will come out and shoot you and you've got a split second to either pull left or right. And you only, it only is, you know, you have to just look at the screen. It's, it sounds like the kind of thing that would become annoying. Is that the bullet dodge thing? Yeah, it's, you can either go left or right, and that's it. Right. And it's at first, you really have to study where the bullet's going, but you've got a second to react. Um, and that, But when that happens in the flow of battle, and there's all sorts of shit going on, it's actually really cool, and you feel mm. like an absolute badass running through and sort of dodging bullets and stuff. Um, the Mexican standoffs are good. That's never something that's properly worked. Um, one hand, you control one hand with one stick, and you have to keep a hand as near to the gun as possible and then a, a percentage meter goes up and then you, your other uh, thumbstick you place a sort of target on the character and he moves around and you basically have to try and get as close to 100% as you can and you can draw first and then just shoot him dishonorably uh, but the idea is to wait until he draws first and then get both meters up to as close to 100% it's really satisfying um, the, it's just it, it's like um, uh, Far Cry Blood Dragon it's the perfect amount of game for the price they're asking for mm. it 
But um, the meat of it, really, and the thing that I really responded to, which reminded me of the club and um, and Bullet Storm, is the arcade mode where you take scenarios, they pack a load of people, and then you have to keep your multiplier going. Oh, nice! Horrendously yeah. addictive. Um, and ju- I mean, that's where I'm going to be spending the rest of my time with it because I finished the campaign. I will do the campaign again, and there's things like collectibles and stuff that's, uh, that make you want to return to it. Um, but the, the campaign, the story is just really fun, and the way it toys with its own sort of format is really, really clever. Um, it's so much more than you expect it would be, and the, the word of mouth is like completely deserved. I'm surprised it has had some sort of the critical reaction has been a little bit mixed. Uh, and I don't quite understand that. It's it, it, playing it today. It's as addictive as trials uh, when you're stuck trying to beat someone's score. I've only got one mm. friend who's got it, uh, but I hope that uh, more people do. It's well, that's why I feel like I should get it on Xbox just for that reason. I wish yeah. I could. Um, I wish you could battle across systems in terms of scores. But yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's as addictive as the as trials is, and it's so oh, it's so satisfying. It's just one of those games that's so satisfying to play. They've worked out every angle, even when you're running through the campaign, and it's not just a corridor. There are loads of little sort of side routes and stuff, and you can do some really cool sort of stuff. And then there's the bu- the bullet time thing. What do they call it? It's uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. It. Yeah, but yeah. It's basically it, bullet time, and it's, yeah, it's focus. Fo- I don't know. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's some shit like that. Um, concentration. It's concentration, isn't I it? I think maybe it is actually. Yeah. Um, and that's just it, when you're sort of pulling off headshots in that mode. It's the most satisfying thing in the world. The level up systems neat. You can either sort of pick to be up close with shotgunny type, or you can have the pistols, or you can, or you can sort of mix and match. And that's really cool. You can sort of uh, make the multiplier last longer, or you can be better from a distance, or you can pull off faster automatic headshots if you're near. All of these cool little things that you can sort of pick and pick and pick a mix. Um, at the end of the day, it's not an original game. There are QTEs galore. There are breach sequences galore. There are gun turret set pieces up the arse. I mean, it, this, it doesn't, in a way, it doesn't do anything more than uh, than, than, than Zast of it. But it does everything with flair and panache. And for all of its imperfections, I mean, towards the, the final third, there are a, a host of bits where a guy will come out, and the only way you can know to kill him is to have died previously by him. You know, well, it, there's, there's yeah. spikes at the end, which are just like, what? Come on, guys, Jesus. Um, but it's just a, an absolutely belting shooter, and for 1200 Microsoft points, you are laughing, um, or whatever that is, that's 10 quid or so. Um, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I have, it's, it, it's up there with Far Cry Blood Dragon. I enjoyed them as much as each other. Mm. And yeah, Ubisoft just like they're ahead of the fucking curve. I don't know. <laughs> this is their franchise, obviously. Um, yeah, but, but they yeah. definitely are. They, yeah. they they seem to be nailing this. Uh, we talked about it in the early days of the podcast with um, I'm Alive, which is actually Ubisoft, yeah. and um, Alan Wake's American Nightmare. These smaller AAA style games that are cheaper and more more you know, condensed and that, for the way I play games these days as well, I don't want every game to be a sprawling 20 hour 40 hour epic, it's so yeah. nice to play something in the last 5 hours is really really well made and then you're done, but this sounds like it's even better than that. It is, I mean I, I felt uh, if it was just the campaign, it's worth the money anyway yeah. um, initially when I, when I spoke to you, I remember I said I played the trial, it was amazing, but I'm going to wait, I'm a bit skint, I could I could wait until it's cheap and then you were like, it's Techland, I was like, no it's not and then I realised it's Techland, and I do just want to support Techland because I'm the only person that didn't hate Call of War as the Garzelle um, but it's the, for the same reasons as this there are so many cool ideas in it uh, it's mm. impossible. I mean, this is this is a hun- this is light years ahead in terms of just the, the quality and the sort of because that was a scrappy. It, it made Dead Island look like fucking you know, naughty dog. Production. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just I, I, I I'm as concerned as I, everyone is about the lack of pre-owned because going in and trading in a game is a necessary. If you if you're not really really wealthy, you have to do that sometimes. Yeah. But this and uh, Blood Dragon, I've never felt uh, I've got my money's worth, and I don't. And the fact that this arcade mode is going to live on for uh, probably a frightening amount of time, um, especially if other people pick it up, is just it's really really terrific. I mean, properly properly good. 